So now let's talk about maybe new client acquisition channels. Mm -hmm. So let's break down the schedule. You're prospecting, you're doing some different things. Walk us through what it is that you're doing. You can't still be making phone calls after 20 years and knocking doors. I mean, obviously that doesn't even work, right? Wink, wink. I mean, that's what we're talking about here, correct? Absolutely. So w when you brought up some stats on my county, so I'm number two gross commission income. Um, and num I've been number one in transactions for I think it's been 11 years in a row. Um, and then I think three of the last five years, number one in the entire state for all companies, just in terms of transactions closed. So obviously I need to work a little bit more on not reducing commissions, right? Let's just be honest. I need to get sure. better about that. Right. And, and, and definitely focus a little bit more on the scripts and, and the value proposition and everything else. But, um, when it comes to generating new channels, uh, the, daily routine again starts the night before right got to make sure you're getting the consistent amount of sleep. alarm clock goes off at the same time i'm exercising at the same time every single morning and then i'm in my office by 7 a.m follow up with any important emails that came in the night before but then at 7 50 that's like okay finish this cup of coffee and let's get ready put your game face on because when eight o'clock hits it's time to roll and that's basically when the buzzard goes off and you know you can do drills you can turn the lights on and off or you can make a buzzard noise on your sound just to you know psychologically get yourself into the game mindset and from there to 11 o'clock is just it's just straight dialing yeah uh, you know i i actually make sure i have three cups of coffee so that i don't have to leave the desk for that that's amount right. of time and and just get through it and then i usually take a 15 20 minute break check in with my assistant, see if there was anything to follow up with, um, and then back behind the desk to follow up with any of those that I didn't get a hold of or that you know got interrupted by dropping kids off at school or whatever else. Um, and then from there, I go into um, follow up um, with anything from the day before, any offers that we're working on right now. And then usually I like to book my appointments from one to four. And then in the evening, I like to do a second follow up with any of those hot leads. I love it. I love it. And typically, um, with your business plan, how many conversation does it suggest that you need to have on a daily basis? And are you hitting that on a daily basis? I, I am. I am hitting it on a daily basis. And that's something where if I'm in my actual office and, and I can show that and, and send you a picture of it. But basically, I just have a notepad. Yeah. And it's got a, a, um, a hash down the center. Appointments are on one side, contacts are on the other. And, and it's just the old archaic I got to make 10 contacts an hour at least, and I got to get to 40 contacts a day. Yeah. And is that what That's you're doing every day, Monday through Friday right now, Ryan? Yes, sir. Yeah. About yeah. 10 contacts on Saturday and about five to eight on Sunday. Got it. Yeah. And so a lot of people that that we talk to, uh, whether that in our coaching community or just realtors in general, they still are trying to look for reasons on why they can't be successful. So when you talk about 10 contacts an hour, we see the average being seven. A lot of agents are like, well, nobody picks up the phone, Brandon. I mean, no, that doesn't even work anymore. But yet again, here we are having a conversation with, did you say the number one agent in, in the state transaction wise? Yeah. yeah. Last year, number two, the couple of years before that, number one. Yeah. And so what would you say, Ryan, to an agent who says, you're having 10 conversations an hour, like nobody picks up the phone these days. Are you calling expireds for sell by owners, just listed, just sold, absentee owners? Who are you calling and what advice would you give to those that just believe in their mind for whatever reason that nobody picks up the phone these days? Well, I, <laughs> just like I tell my 14-year-old kid, right? Excuses are like buttholes. We all got them. They all stink. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. I'm going to steal that. Right. I mean, I, I don't consider myself to be a highly skilled agent. And again, I'm not proud of that. But one of my greatest strengths is being objective with myself. And it's the skill I'm trying to teach my son as he plays with Olympic development program teams and other things. Know what you are, know what you're not. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason why he's not playing basketball anymore is because we're not a tall family. And it's like, all right, there's five kids on the court. One's the coach's kid, two or six, four. You're playing for two spots. Stick with football and soccer. So Anyhow, long story short, it does work. And anybody wants to see the 1099s, it works. Yeah. Um, but it's not what they want to hear. It's it's no different That's when, right. you know, well, I want to do the seven minute abs. It's like, okay, yeah. it just doesn't work. We'd, yeah. we'd all have abs. We'd all make $2 million a year, a million dollars a year. 
and you know we'd all have the same Rolexes and everything else. It doesn't work that way. So that's right. People do answer the phone. You just got to call more. And that's right. That doesn't mean do that you may not. Yeah, it, that doesn't mean you don't have to call that expired, canceled, or a hot circle prospecting call three, four, five times. That's right. Sometimes they'll. I honestly sometimes they'll pick up the phone because they're like, "Why are you still calling?" Yeah. Because yep. I wouldn't I be doing it. my job if I didn't, Mister and Missus Seller, and just you know get into whatever I'm going to get into. Yeah. And they hang up on you. Call back. I'm sorry, we got disconnected. Right, and just you know keep it going and. Sometimes they get really nasty, and if I don't have anything better to do that evening, I'll just drive by on the way home and knock on the door and apologize. You know what? I'm sorry I offended you. I thought I'd stop by in person to protect and promote the image of agents. So I wanted to stop by and just let you know I apologize. And they'll usually just be taken back and open up a conversation with you. Yeah, that's amazing. So 40 conversations a day. So my entire career, I always, the minimum for our mastermind to be in our mastermind of anybody who is earning a million dollars of taxable income, we call it the daily 30, right? You can't be in our club if you're not hitting 30. You're doing 40. Here's the other objection that I'm hearing from agents. You want me to do 30, 40, 50 conversations a day, Brandon? I've got one listing I'm taking, taking care of. Can you give people perspective of your pipeline, how many active listings you have, and yet you're still doing 40 conversations. I want people to expand their mindset because it's not like you work with one client here or there. You're probably sitting on how many active listings right now or pendings. Uh, so let me tell you exactly. Let me look. Yeah. And while you're doing that, you, you get what I'm asking, so, right? The agent's like, uh, yeah. I can't make that many contacts. I'm busy. <laughs> So I have 48 active listings. 48 active listings, okay. And which is a low number for me. Sure. Uh, and again, let's exclude 2020, 2021. Yeah, yeah. You know, if we go back to 2018, 2019, that's a low number for me. Uh, there's 32 pending right now. Um, and a very interesting stat that I have not really had before, even going back to 05, listings in withdrawn status, mm. meaning they couldn't accomplish your goal. Interest rates went up, so we couldn't sell uh, because they couldn't now qualify for their new home or their bill job was pushed back, right? Because of the supply chain issues and things like that. So, so I'm working through those and that's something that I haven't experienced before. So I've had to call more experienced agents and say, hey, what, what other things can I do to get these back out of withdrawn into active? Sure. Yeah. And so you, you, you have a huge inventory, right? For, 48 and that's lower than what you're used to. And, you know, a lot pending, a lot going on. You're doing this with how many staff members? You said you have one assistant. Is that right? Yeah, just one assistant. So so the question is, when it comes to high performance, you know, the key thing in my experience has been our ability to not invite distractions because most of us are looking for distractions, looking for the reasons on why we can't prospect. How are you able to stay focused and get in those 40 conversations when, you have a lot more going on than than most, right? You've got 70 something clients right now that you're also managing with another human being. So how, how are you able to stay focused, Ryan? So obviously a lot of that comes down to the goals and making sure that every single day you're committed to accomplishing the goals that you want. Again, the schedule is the most important. If, if, if you want to get something done, you want to ask a busy person because their schedule is usually more efficient. They're going to get more things done. Um, and so everything for me always reverts back to having a really good schedule and making sure that you follow it with no deviations. Now, when, when I'm dealing with agents that are selling 40, 50, 60 homes a year, for me, I tell them, no exception. You don't go on a listing presentation at this time to this time because you need to be prospecting. Now, when you start selling over 100 homes a year, you've kind of earned the right, I guess you could say maybe. And I know the agents that sell 400 homes would disagree with me because they're like, no, when you get to 400 homes, you can deviate. Sure. But the agents I see that do over 100 homes a year can get back to the office and get back on their schedule without missing any steps. So like you said, oh, well, this expired just came up. I better go knock on this door. Well, that's an excuse to get out of those phone calls during your prospecting hours or refill your coffee or take a phone call or go to a PTA meeting or anything like that. And I do have to give, again, my staff her credit. She's been with me 14 years. I, I joke. It's like the longest relationship I've ever had with a woman, right? But <laughs> Exactly. Um, she, uh, she's amazing. She does the work of four people. So again, I, I have to give 
all the credit she deserves there because normally I would have to have three or four doing what she does. Just like I guess most agents would have to be three or four agents to get the amount of prospecting done that I do. But the groups of agents that I talk with and hang out with and have been affiliated with in different states, they have no problem doing this either. And they're producing, because they're in bigger markets, a much greater gross commission income than I am. I mean, we're talking in the three and a half to $4 million range sure. and consistently doing it. And so they actually produce better in the slower markets, actually, because commissions usually go up, right? You know, That's it's been right. a race to the bottom for lenders and, and agents right now. And so they actually produce better. Plus, in a normal market or going into a recession, you got 73% less competition out there. I'm not yep. competing with the barber, the stylist, the, the nail technician, right? I'm just competing with mostly professionals. So the schedule is going to be the most important thing in, in getting that done. And then you just got to commit to it. And you just got to make those phone calls. No exceptions. I, I don't care. There, there just isn't any exception to that at all. Yeah, I totally agree. So when I coach an agent, you know, we, we build out the business plan. The business plan says, okay, here's how many contacts we need per day. And then we start to talk about something uh, called contact distribution. And we say, okay, if you need 44 conversations, here's where those conversations should come from. In your 40 conversations, who is it that you're calling? Is it mostly expired or can you break that down on who you are calling? Absolutely. And, and recently it's been a little bit different than in a normal market, right? Sure, so sure. when interest rates were really low, I was really hitting the circle prospecting more because that yep. was just easy pickings for, hey, we can upgrade you and get you a lower payment, um, right? Right now, it's definitely back heavy on you know the, the most recent canceled, FISBOs, uh, and expireds. Th Got those it. are the ones I'm hitting hardest. So about 20 to 23% or 20 to 23 of my contacts per day are coming from there. The rest of them are coming from sphere of influence. And for the last two months, honestly, and again, I'm just being 100% transparent, I've cut circle prospecting out, not on purpose. It just kind of happened because I was so busy getting to the, there were so many cancels, so many expireds, and a lot more for sale by owners all of a sudden. So I need to get that implemented back in because no matter what the markets are, I always feel like you should still hit every aspect. Now, you might want to change the percentage of time spent on each one. But the circle prospecting lately is, has not, for my market, proven to be as good. And then, you know, I expect here in the near future, we'll probably add back in the notice of defaults again a little bit more aggressively, right? Because I'm starting Absolutely. to see those go back up. Yeah. And, and just like anything else, markets are cyclical. And so the lead generation strategy is also cyclical. We're coming out of a circle prospecting market back into the expired market. And so as the market shifts, different things pose as different opportunities. So last question for me, you know, I think a lot of people um, really, when they get into this business of selling, they have a hard time understanding pipeline maturity. You see, they want everything off the first contact and sometimes that's fine. But I'm curious in your experience of doing this at such a high level for 20 years, are you finding that most of your high quality appointments come out of lead follow-up? or the initial conversation? And really what I'm asking is how important is lead follow-up to you? Lead follow-up is everything. So the majority of appointments always come from lead follow-up. That's right. I, I don't care how skilled you are, they're gonna come from lead follow-up. And, and that's just a numbers game, right? Yep. If you're talking to 40 people a day, if you do the math on it, most of them are gonna come from lead follow-up. Now, again, a really good skilled scripted agent is going to convert a much higher percentage of course off that first phone call um, sure. but with 40 phone calls a day and only you know maybe let's say 10 50 and expired cancels a day do the math you're going to get more from lead follow-up of course plus then your pipeline um, those are much easier to close um, and if you have a, a big pipeline as i do from years and years and years back you know i go through and it's like oh their kids are graduating this May. I mean, I got a stack of those, right? Kids are graduating this May. It's time to downsize. That's right. Right. So I'm going to be following up with them here in the next month or so to get them on the market for the summer season. So um, it's definitely going to be lead follow up. And I feel like 
agents changing the mindset to understanding that again it's it's like asking your girlfriend out or your spouse out how many times did you have to ask i know i had to ask two three times before i got the date and then i had asked three or four more times for the second date that's right, right. And, and then you dated for a long time before you got married yeah uh, it, you know and so it's like it, it takes some time to close that deal and so i usually go into it expecting seven points of contact yep. in a normal market right lately it's been better than that it's been closer to three but Seven points of contact um, is about average that I've seen in our market for the high skilled agents um, yeah. to close to a contract. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, because I, again, it goes back to instant gratification, right? Everybody wants to call one expired one time, meet with them one time, get the listing on. It's like this doesn't work that way. You know, it's going to take you, and, and they don't understand pipeline because a lot of agents will. Brandon, I'm making 20, 30 conversations a day. I've been doing this for two weeks. I haven't got a listing yet. What's up? Well, it's like, well, you, you haven't built a pipeline that is mature enough to manifest listings yet, right? So um, if you could, someone that might be watching this or, or, or listening to the replay, Ryan, that's just starting out in their real estate business, if you could give that person advice, maybe it'd be advice to give yourself 20 years ago, the Ryan that's 18, getting started in real estate, what, what maybe one or two or three things would you tell yourself that the new realtor could, could benefit from right now? So the, the one thing looking back, I wish I would have put a better database system in to effect right away. And I think just being young and immature and, and maybe naive and didn't know what I was, if I was going to still be doing this, of course. And sure. um, having a better database system in place with you know names, phone numbers, kids' names, uh, you know birthdays, things like that would have been better because now taking a, you know, where I've done over 5,300 transactions in my career, trying to implement, you know, five to eight years ago into a day. I mean, that's a lot of, I mean, yeah, just pain in the butt for somebody to have to try to input all that. Right. So it's like at this point now, it's almost impossible to change the database system. Right. So I would definitely right. focus on that. Um, I would also focus on um, having lofty goals. Right. And, and, when I look back at my goals, because I still have the sheets of paper that I wrote my goals on, I said, oh, if I get to um, $250,000 a year, I'm set. I can have a million dollar home, $100,000 sports car. And then I got to 250 and I'm like, that ain't going to work. You know, right. and later got to 500. I'm like, Shit, that ain't going to work. That's right. You know, and then it just, it just kept growing and growing and growing. And so we obviously can't say, oh, I want to make a million dollars a year starting out and have nothing for the in between, right? I mean, you really sure. need to have it broken down on a, in my opinion, uh, as you get higher producing, you know, in a minute basis, right? I've got to have a goal every single minute of what I'm doing, and then an hourly, and then a daily, weekly, you know, quarterly, because then then it's achievable, right? It's it's like if if you're trying to learn how to jog or run a certain uh, event in a certain time frame, it's like okay, I have to move my feet X amount of steps per second or per minute in order to achieve that goal. Now it's tangible. Now it's like, okay, that I can focus on. If you just say I have to run a marathon in three hours, I, I'm going to get lost and find out I'm an hour behind 20 minutes into the marathon, right? But 100%. if you give me you know, something that I feel like is in front of me that I can put my hands on, it's easier to obtain that goal. Um, and then the third thing really is, again, stop taking the path of least resistance and just understand that if you want results, you have got to work for them. And despite everything you see on the national media and news and everything else, the American dream still works. You work hard, you bust your ass, you're going to get paid. It doesn't matter what you do in our country. If you're good at it, you're going to get paid. If you're good at YouTube, you're going to get paid. Yeah. Right. If so, the knocking the doors, the making the phone calls as unglorified, unsexy as it is, I would do it all day long. I really, really would. And the reason why is I look at what does it pay me per hour. That's and right. It's the most profitable thing I can do. It's over $1,000 an hour. It's like $1,152 an hour. I am going to call as much as I possibly can call. End of story. I mean, last night I walked out to my car because my house was a little bit loud at 730 and had to call four more people back because we got disconnected. They got busy at work and I wanted to make sure I followed up with them again. So those would be the three things looking back for me that I would really focus on again, you know, database, having a really good schedule, and then just not buying into the bullshit of a lot of what these companies are pitching. Um, because think about it. And, and I've, I've owned a real estate company before, right? Yep. 
I'm, I'm one of you know one of the owners of our, our companies now. Most owners don't like high producing agents because they're a pain in the ass. Not right. because we're creating you know National Association of Realtor Ethics complaints. We avoid all that. But you have the more deals you do, the more crazy people you come across. It doesn't That's matter right. if you dot every I cross every T. That's part of dealing with the public. We use the copy machines more. We're in the conference rooms more. We drink more coffee, right? We use more square footage in the office. Owners want agents that sell, usually, depending on the markets, 12 to 20 homes a year. Those That's are the right. most profitable agents. Yep. So a lot of times you buy into their, their training programs. And I sit there and watch them like, they're just creating a herd. They're yeah. really not trying to get you to that next level. They want you to be reliant on that company. 100%. Right? So well said. And yeah, I say it all the time. You know, most brokers and associations and boards, it's not in their best interest to tell you the truth. It just really isn't. Exactly. It's not. It's it's it. Absolutely. Just like the government, right? The government's That's not right. going to come out and tell us the truth about certain things. And so why do why do certain companies not bring you in and hire you specifically? Is because it wouldn't be in the best interest of their bottom dollar to hire you and bring you in to get all their agents producing higher. That's it right. just wouldn't. So yep. they, they need to look at it objectively and say, okay, forget what I'm hearing all the time from, you know, the national franchises or from uh, the news. What does common sense tell me is going to help produce the best for myself and my family? And unfortunately, it's usually what we don't want to hear, right? It's, 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 Oh man, if I want to get in shape and have abs, I got to exercise every day. I got to sweat and I got to push the limits. That's what we have to do in the office every single day. And once you've done it for a month or two, it gets a lot easier. And then like anything else in life, when you get good at it, it gets enjoyable. But it takes three, four, five months to really get into a groove of anything new, right? It's even when, when you helped me change some of my scripts. Yep. I mean, I, I fumbled it for a month, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, but it happens. You know, I, I was doing it a certain way and saying a certain thing for so long that when we changed it slightly, it was like, oh, crap. Uh, even this morning, I found myself text messaging the wrong thing because I couldn't get through to him. So I sent him a follow up text. I had to go back and delete it and resend it. Right. And so it takes time. And uh, ultimately, if you have the goals and the commitment in place, you know, and with your help, they'll get there. Yeah. Well, Ryan, listen, I appreciate you very much. Obviously, uh, you've got a lot to do. So we're going to let you get back to it. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to going on the journey and watching you continue to grow your career. Certainly you've, you've done very well for yourself. And so we appreciate you jumping on the show. No, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate all your help. We'll talk to you soon, Ryan. Thank yeah. you. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.